In this lecture, we'll give an overview of why the platform of global business or global marketplaces, uh, different economies around the world, why those offer real significant possibilities with respect to our value chain and how the value chain offers uh, different strategic opportunities for firms that are expanding. Now, most of these aren't surprises. We've heard about them in different ways. But I want you to just consider this wide palette of possible ways that you can use strategy from a global basis to improve both the products that you're offering, offering them uniquely into various markets, but also how you might vary them to reduce one's risk. For example, lower wage rates. Some economies have lower rate, wage rates than others in different skill areas, for example. And so you might choose to put some of the activities that are labor intensive into economies with lower wage rates. This, of course, as long as one can maintain the quality, reduces the overall cost and therefore gives you some competitive advantage. There might also be markets that have higher worker productivity, which generally means all wages, although wages might be higher, there is investment in technology and education and the like so that individual uh, workers, each one of them, can provide a higher amount of profit per hour work. That's labor productivity. So you may, may, may place higher skilled type of work into other economies where you have high labor productivity, highly educated labor force, lots of equipment and technology to support them, US market, European market, and the like. You also may have markets with lower energy costs. Um, some countries have higher taxes for energy. They're harder to get energy to. They don't have their own energy. They have to import everything. And so energy costs that are required for local operations might be another predictor of what sorts of activities are best placed into that particular economy, that particular um, arena, uh, for providing maximum return from your value chain activities. There's also environment regulation. Some environments might, some um, areas, countries might have high regulations, which make it expensive, for example, to burn fossil fuels, in which case you might locate some of your activities in other markets. That may sound um, um, counterproductive in the long term from a global warming perspective and the like, but at the same time, in terms of trying to create maximum value for your shareholders in the short term, increasing your short term profits, there is that opportunity that exists because of different environmental regulations. Similarly, with tax rates, we'll talk more about this in future reference, in future lectures, but certain countries have lower tax rates or different kinds of taxes. They have lower corporate taxes, lower profit taxes, but some of them also have different kinds of taxes, like they have value-added tax, where there's a government tax for every step in the value chain. When something's manufactured and goes to the next phase and is sold to somebody that assembles it or transferred, there is a tax on the value that was added in each step. That may cause you to think about what kinds of activities you place in economies with one tax regime versus another as you seek to maximize your returns for customers or for shareholders, but also reduce your overall risk. Risk is important when you think about different kinds of inflation. Certain economies have high inflation rates, and low, others have lower inflation rates. That tends to uh, impact the stability of a currency, therefore the stability and the predictability and the forecasts for pricing. So if you want to be buying raw materials or lots of goods and you have a high inflation economy, it's very difficult to predict what your prices are going to be and what the exchange rates are going to be. You may have to be making more hedging decisions about your tax, about your, um, your currencies that you use in those kinds of situations. So you want to manage that as well in terms of keeping your risk down. You might want to place certain types of activities close to suppliers so you have good relationships with them. If there's lots of interaction between customer and supplier, you may want the supplier to be in a location where you have a, uh, <clears throat> have a location as well or, or a, 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 a subsidiary. So you might want to be thinking about where your supplier network is in terms of positioning your own activities. Um, you also might be thinking in the same way with customers. If you do a lot of customization, if customers want specific changes or customization to their products, it might be important to locate certain elements of your process or your business closer to customers. For example, final assembly might be close to customers. If the customers want a wide range of possible uh, features and functions, 
you can reduce your inventory costs by placing the final assembly for those various, function, various features uh, closer to the customer. Um, you also have uh, distribution costs, trucking, trains, planes, that sort of thing, something that has very uh, high cost of transportation, uh, you tend to place closer to where you are located. In, in a domestic economy, uh, if you think about it, there's no, it's difficult to create a national cement or concrete company because concrete transportation costs are so high versus what their end prices are. So you have situations like that. You also might be thinking about placing certain functions closer to your natural resources. If there's certain resources you need, it might help to do some early processing in your value chain close to your natural resources to reduce transportation costs or loss associated with the, uh, transforming the natural resources into or close to the final product. So you have a whole palette of possible ways that you could take advantage of all the differences that exist in global economies. And that's one of the core reasons. There are many, there are others which we'll talk about in future, lesson, uh, future uh, lectures. But this is one of the core reasons why moving into the international marketplace creates new opportunities for business, but also greatly increases the complexity. It's a different type of strategy because you're moving parts around to take advantage of local differences. That's a different type of strategy than the business strategy that we've talked about um, in our prior discussions. So in the next lecture, we'll start to talk about the impact of different governments and the economic risks associated with different economies as we continue this discussion of moving a firm into an international strategic environment where it becomes more complex, greater opportunities, but also more complexity, and in some cases, more risk. And that's what we'll talk about in our next lecture.